I want to welcome everyone to this very special presentation of a conversation with Justice Clarence Thomas. Well, I mean, I'm from Savannah. Those of you who've been fortunate to go to Savannah, <laughs> uh, and really, it's a, it's a nice place. In a very, very short time, Justice Thomas has become a very, very good friend of Wake Forest. This has just been an unbelievable experience. I think uh, we really learned so much from him and he's really inspiring he's just such a jovial humble and, and really an inspiring guy to hear talk i don't tell the story of where i grew up like perhaps some people would tell it i grew up in a safe neighborhood with really good people and i never thought in a million years that i would sit in a room and talk to a supreme court justice shake hands take pictures and actually talk to him about his life i don't know how many of you seen the movie the help but that's, those were basically the help are basically the people I grew up with. And the neighborhood was like that neighborhood. In fact, the, I was telling my wife when we watched it, I said that kitchen is far beyond what we had, the kitchen that she had. It's far beyond what we had because we started with the wood stoves. But that's where I grew up. He made himself seem really human. In class, we just read the cases and we just hear their opinion about a certain issue, but we don't really see him as a person. I had the opportunity to meet him personally. We had the swearing in of some of our alumni before the Supreme Court last year. And during that time, he engaged our alumni with a sense of warmth that you're gonna to see today in this presentation. I finished high school with three years of Latin, two years of French, two years of German, uh, physics, chemistry. I taught myself algebra. Um, the, there are lots of things that they just sort of pushed you. You have an obligation to learn, but that came from the help. Another thing that really stuck out to me was his stories about his grandfather. Well, my grandfather still to this day is the greatest man I've ever known. Uh, you think about it, here's a guy whose mother dies when he's eight years old. He's, an, he's not no father. Um, that, she then goes to live with his grandmother, who's a freed slave, and she dies when he's 12 or 13, and he goes to live with an uncle who has 13 kids and who's a very hard man. And yet, he turns out to be such a good man and a wonderful, wonderful grandfather, but again, very, very demanding. And to hear these stories from him about how this made him into the man that he is today, uh, it really hit home and, and again, was just very inspiring. He talked about how he went into a tough job environment, just his childhood and the, the rough time he had getting to where he is. It just left you very hopeful and inspired about what the future holds. The, this job market, it's the same kind of job market when I got out of school. I had student loans, a kid, and no job. The a law degree and no job and I became obsessed with it, and I thought it was the end of the world. So he kind of just took a chance on a job in Missouri, and it's led him to where he is today. And along comes this man from Missouri who says, Clarence, plenty of room at the top. I said, well, you're rich. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to be on the bottom and just be on the... And um, he was right. And so to hear something like that from such an amazing man, uh, to me was just so inspiring. He gave me encouragement and he showed me it was good to be positive even when things look bad and especially when things look bad and I never had that, never understood that and then I realized that that's what my grandfather was doing the whole time. A point so takeaway from what he said today was being positive and not letting cynicism seep into our lives from older generations and I think it's really hard to to do that. It's always easier to be negative about things and be kind of mopey or whatnot, but it's really hard to stay positive, especially when you have people in the background saying that you can't do this or you can't do that. Think about it. What the heck did I have to look forward to? I was born in 1948 in Savannah, Georgia. What the heck did I have to look forward to? I was wandering through the tenements of Savannah, raw sewage, unpaved roads, and then this, you had segregation and full, full swing. What did I have to look forward to? And I couldn't go to school in my native state of Georgia. I remember looking at the card catalog and realizing that I qualified to go to West Point and to Georgia Tech and all these schools. This is 1966 or so. I, mean, I knew there wasn't a dewdrops chance in hell that I would go to either one of those schools. So what did I have to look forward to?
and just ask you to be encouraged. You know, you don't know the future, and I didn't know the future. I have no idea how I wound up on the Supreme Court of the United States. I have no, I literally, I have no idea. You know, one day I was in Georgia running around barefooted. Next day I was on the Supreme Court. <laughs> but anyway, I want to in, encourage you um, and thank you. I want to thank you for one, showing up. Uh, I want to thank you for your courtesy. Uh, I want to thank you all for filling my spirit too. Because each time I come out to these law schools, each time I visit with students, it fills me too. It encourages me to go back and to do the job in a way that keeps in mind that it's your country, it's your constitution, and it's your future. So thank you all very much. Oh,